Alright, and welcome back to uh, our second uh, section in the Chapter 5, uh, uh, where we're dealing with, again, subtotals, pivot tables, and pivot charts. So in this uh, particular video here, we're going to be covering some pivot table basics. Uh, we're going to be looking at how to create pivot tables uh, and how to manipulate some of the, uh, uh, some of the information in pivot tables. Before we get into pivot tables, uh, I want to cover a couple of uh, key terms here. One in particular, data mining. Uh, data mining is a is a uh, a task that's created or that's achieved as part of using pivot tables. Uh, and basically, that's the process of analyzing large volumes of data uh, using some advanced statistical techniques and identifying some trends and patterns in some of your data that you're that you're reviewing. Uh, so a pivot table or a pivot table report, however you want to reference it, again, that's an interactive table that uses calculations uh, for the purpose of consolidation and summarizing uh, data from a source into a separate table. Uh, so before we actually get into creating the pivot table, uh, I want to cover just some, uh, some, some standard rules of engagement or some, uh, some good points to, to look at when you create a pivot table. So you want to ensure that your data source is structured uh, very well and that you uh, apply the rules for good table design. Um, so you want to use some meaningful column labels. You want to ensure that your information that you're working with, the data that you're working with, is accurate. Uh, and you want to make sure that you uh, avoid any blank rows or columns in your data set. One other thing I want to talk about as well is the differentiation between the use of pivot tables or subtotals as we saw in our previous video. Uh, so both uh, pivot tables and the use of a, a subtable in a data set kind of provide that aggregation or subtotal of data. But the pivot table functionality provides some flexibility in the creation of complex subtotals, cross-referencing that by multiple categories, uh, gives you the ability to apply filter and specify how your data, how you want your data to to appear. Subtotals, on the other hand, they just kind of add a, a rows of aggregation to your current data set. Uh, as we saw in the previous, uh, previous video, we saw it from one and two levels down, whereas you know, a pivot table kind of provides a little more flexibility in the, in the complexity of it. Uh, one thing I, I do want to point out the difference between subtotals and pivot tables uh, is, is the fact that subtotals do... Uh, kind of modify your current data set where pivot tables basically leave the, the integrity of your original data set alone uh, and create that, that secondary or that independent pivot table. So there are three methods that you can use to create a pivot table. Um, you can use using the quick analysis tool. Um, you can use, uh, use it via the uh, a recommended pivot table dialog box or you can just insert uh, a blank pivot table. We'll kind of go through all each one of those methods uh, in working with pivot tables. I've included in the, the slide deck here um, the instructions required for, for creating each, each pivot table. So again, these are kind of the three different methods that you can use to create um, with your pivot table. We'll also look at uh, pivot table modifications. So once you get your pivot table created, um, you may need to see your data from kind of a different perspective or you need to slice and dice the data a little bit. Uh, so you can add rows, value, values, columns. Um, you can expand and collapse uh, items in the pivot table. And you can remove, uh, rearrange, um, or uh, change your field value settings um, in your pivot table, as well as going ahead and, and refreshing the pivot table in the event that your original data set uh, requires modification. So let's go back to our data set here. Uh, we're looking at um, we're looking at our, our sales data again, uh, and I kind of want to uh, to go ahead and kind of delete the original pivot table here. But we're going to take a look at creating that pivot table. So again, there's three different ways you can do that. You can select your data range, or you can just click within the data. Either or. Right click, use the quick analysis tool, and you can select tables. Then it gives you the option to select uh, pivot table, and it actually provides you with recommendations for 
um, the kinds of pivot tables that you want to create. So again, you can create a pivot table based off of um, selling price, some of the asking price, and the count of the number sold by agent. Um, you can also go into click inside the data set, go to the insert tab, and again you can create uh, you can create a, a pivot table from this recommended pivot tables option and again it gives you kind of a, uh, a, a variety of different methods of how you can create your pivot table. So that's the second way to go ahead and create a pivot table. The third way again is just to create um, a blank pivot table uh, and in doing so um, you just click the insert tab and again click pivot table it's going to open up a dialog box um, you then go in here and select your range uh, where you want the pivot table to uh, to appear so if you want to appear in a new worksheet I would recommend a new worksheet um, but again you can kind of select where you want uh, that pivot table to uh, to appear and you've got three different methods for doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, work through creating a pivot table by right clicking and using the click analysis tool. I'm going to go over here and select pivot tables or tables and then I'm going to select uh, the sum of selling price, asking price, and count of number by selling division. So again this gives me a uh, a pivot tool creation um, puts it into a separate worksheet. You can go in and rename that. Um, but I just want to point out that uh, it, it takes all that information uh, based off what we uh, specified and creates uh, our pivot table for us to work with. You'll notice over to the right of your worksheet you have uh, an option window that kind of provides you some ability to uh, to work through uh, modifications uh, of this pivot table. Uh, and so some of the things that we can do uh, in modifying pivot table uh, is we can add rows to the pivot table. Um, you can increase uh, the information that's included in there. Um, you can modify the, uh, the columns that are included in there. If you wanted to add uh, city, we can choose city and include that as part of our, uh, our pivot table. If we Again, if we go ahead and, and do that, it provides um, some more sliced data uh, in, in terms of how that pivot table is created. If we remove city from there again, um, it, it removes the, the aggregation or the differentiation of, of uh, the application of city in, as part of the, uh, the pivot table itself. Uh, so again, uh, you can collapse, you can expand the information that's provided in the pivot table to kind of provide a little bit more detail uh, in terms of uh, what information you want to see uh, and how you want uh, that to, to go ahead and, um, and be visible in your pivot table. In addition to adding fields uh, or rows into your, into your pivot table, um, you can go ahead and uh, you can remove so you can, if you don't want, um, let's say you don't want the asking price in there, uh, you just want to focus on selling price. Again, you can go ahead and remove that asking price and focus strictly on on the selling price. Again, if you don't want to include the agent in there, uh, it, again, it, it's it's going to impact how your information is is uh, uh, is referenced in there. Um, so again, uh, just be careful in how you uh, how you go ahead and uh, and reference your your information um, in the pivot table. So again, get familiar with uh, the various um, components of the uh, uh, of, of the pivot table. I would focus on um, again just uh, working through the rearranging of this. And again, what you can do in looking through um, your information, you'll notice you have rows here. This is how it's aggregated. So you can actually 
right now I've got it aggregated since I removed my selling agent. Um, it's it's aggregated by address and then selling agent. I really don't like that view because it doesn't help me. Um, I want this to appear as I want to appear. I want it to appear at by selling agent and then by address. So again, I would go down here. You notice I have it by address and then selling agent. I go ahead and click move up on the selling agent, and I get my my change in the view uh, of the pivot table. It actually gives the listing of um, by the agent first, and then it gives a, a more detailed list of, of uh, the address. So again, moving through the rows, uh, the values again, you can change. How they appear in what order. Uh, so again, I've got the count in between my sum of the selling price and asking price. Um, if I want to change that, I go and select that pick list here. And let's just say I want to move this to the beginning because I want to see how many they sell and then go for more. So again, uh, these these are, are ways that you can kind of manipulate uh, manipulate your Pivot table for your uh, for your whatever use that you're um, that you're applying this for. Uh, one of the things that you can do as you if your if your data changes in your initial uh, spreadsheet in your initial initial worksheet is if you have to add more data in there. One of the things that you need to do is actually refresh the pivot table. Um, so in order to do, to do that, you click in the pivot table itself. You go up to the analyze tab, and one of the things I want to point out is that um, this pivot table tools menu becomes active when you create a pivot table and you actually select it. Uh, so make sure if you're working within the pivot table, it tells you to use the analyze of its sign, um, that you actually select the pivot table and that you're working with that. So you go ahead and click the analyze tab, and we're going to go ahead and do the refresh. So you could do a refresh all. And again, if you cha if we changed our information, then, then the information that we had displayed um, that we had changed in our sales data sheet would then be referenced and refreshed in our, in our in our pivot table here. But since we didn't make any modifications, uh, nothing was changed. So, pivot table basics: how to create a pivot table, how to move your columns around, uh, expanding and collapsing. Some of the rows in the pivot table you can change how the information is displayed. You can add and remove fields. Uh, so again, this will take you um, through page 349. It will give you everything that you need to work through hands-on exercise 2, which covers pivot table uh, basics. And we will have uh, the working in our next uh, section. We'll be working with pivot table options, dealing with filtering and slicing pivot tables.